It seems that rarely a week passes without a video or a story circulating through the news cycle about uh, bullying and kids in schools. And this has caught my attention particularly because I've spent the last 10 years or so studying the relationships between teenage boys and their definitions of masculinity. When we talk about bullying, it seems incidental that many times when we hear stories about young people taking their lives due to homophobic bullying, that those kids are boys and primarily straight identified boys. Yet when we look at the statistics about who is being bullied, it's often straight identified boys harassing other straight identified boys for being gay. So what is this about? What boys are trying to do as they bully one another is shore up contemporary definitions of masculinity. That is, boys will target other boys when they exhibit behaviors that are considered feminine, behaviors that are considered incompetent, when they are too touchy, when they are too emotional, and yes, when they exhibit any type of same-sex desire. When I talk to boys about the sorts of homophobic taunts uh, that they deploy, they continually tell me that gay, fag, homo, queer are the worst insults you could deploy. But they simultaneously tell me that they're not actually about sexuality. For the most part, when I speak to young men and, and teenagers about gay rights and gay marriage, um, they support, the vast majority of them support gay rights, gay marriage, legal protections for, for gays. They aren't homophobic on a sort of structural level. So what they're actually afraid of and what they're policing in one another is this, this what I come to call the specter of the fag, right? this profoundly unmasculine man strikes fear in the heart of these boys, right? Because there's no way for them to solidly prove that they are not that man, right? So that the way they prove they're masculine is this continual rejection of the specter of the unmasculine man, which takes the form of homophobic taunts and epithets. A lot of this type of harassment takes place in boys' joking relationships. Think, for instance, about the film 40-Year-Old Virgin. There's that famously funny scene in which two men are, are watching a video game. And while they're watching this video game, they're teasing one another, joking back and forth, asking each other, know how I know you're gay. I'm gay for saying that. You know how I know you're gay? How? How do you know I'm gay? Because you macrameed yourself a pair of jean shorts. You know I know you're gay? You just told me you're not sleeping with women anymore. You know how I know that you're gay? How? Because you're gay and you can tell who other gay people are? You know how I know you're gay? How? You like Coldplay. Oh, you're dead. You're dead. Oh! 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 Leave my torso alone, at least. If you listen to their reasons about why they know the other is gay, it again has very little to do with sexuality, although that does come up once or twice. But the sort of things that come up are taste in music, the clothes they wear, the particular hobbies they engage in. So again, what these men are doing as they're joking back and forth is not necessarily policing heterosexuality, but policing masculinity. And I would say the particularly interesting thing about this scene is that it doesn't look like they're policing anything because they're just making jokes. And indeed, when we look at homophobic harassment among boys, a lot of that type of harassment happens in these joking relationships. And in some ways, I would actually say this is even more serious than the aggressive taunting we see happening because the joking itself hides the seriousness of the deployment of these insults. So given that many of these bullying behaviors take place in boys' friendships, and many of these bullying behaviors are deployed not to police sexuality so much as they are to police masculinity, I think we might want to rethink this contemporary bullying discussion we're having on a national level. Because when we use the word bully, it does a couple things. First, it makes it seem as, there's this, as if there's this group of kids who are targeting this other group of kids which we know is not actually true. It's a much more fluid interaction in which at any given point a boy could exhibit bullying behaviors and at another point he could be the target of bullying behaviors. Second, when we use the word bully to talk about kids' behaviors, it makes it seem as if they're doing something that is unique to childhood and not actually repeating, affirming, investing in all of these norms and expectations that we as adults are handing down. 
For instance, there's this fabulous picture that was taken on the deck of the USS Enterprise uh, in 2011 with a bomb that was about to be uh, dropped um, on Afghanistan. And on that bomb, uh, soldiers had written, hijack this fags. And it's doubtful that they thought the people they were going to drop the bomb on were actually gay, right? Indeed, they were trying to divest them of masculinity, much like boys are trying to do with one another. So it's not as if boys are exhibiting this behavior in a vacuum. Right? In many ways, they're repeating what we as adults are doing ourselves. And so if we change this discussion of bullying and possibly use more adult language to describe it, words like harassment, Right? We might take these sorts of things more seriously, and we might stop telling kids, oh, it gets better when you get older, as if the adult world is so rife with equality. Right? And instead, we could start thinking about ways we could change the sorts of cultural messages we're handing down to kids about gender and sexuality, kindness, generosity, and help them change the world from the bottom up instead of the top down.